Okay, so this is 10 days later, and as I expected, the the nails are doing this. So basically this is, oh, this one is broken. This is due to bending of these nails. So when it bends, it tends to crack. These ones are better because they were a little bit less damaged. So this is why I always, first thing that you always hear that I say, it's always shorten the nails. Okay, so we're gonna remove the polish and we'll see what we can do. You know what I do? I have these and I just tear them apart because when they're thinner, they actually stick to the nail better. Now, if you're new to the video, so I'll explain what I'm doing, just press down. I don't rub it into the nail, it's just press down and away. And then if there's anything left, I'll grab it later. Sometimes wiggling it helps a little bit. So actually, if you, if this is the first video that you're watching, um, I did a video of the previous manicure. So what we did, we removed CMD shellac because this client was experiencing some surface damage. So I wanted to see if the dazzle dry causes less surface damage and this also allows the client to remove the product herself after like a week or something because i do feel that extended product wear especially for some people although her nails are not really very good but it can cause surface damage There's a little bit of staining, which can happen with red nail polish, especially if the surface is a little damaged. But as you can see, this is staining from a nail polish. So the, the stain is red from a red nail polish uh, because that's what dry does not yellow the nails. So the nails are not yellowed, but really any nail polish can cause some staining, but this is a true staining. The yellow that you see, Mm, on the nails after wearing nail polish for too long, I don't believe it's a staining. It's, it's. Um, I think it's a surface damage caused by nitrocellulose, which apparently breaks down over time into nitric acid, and nitric acid can be corrosive and it oxidizes the keratin. That's all right. So I'm going to use the OPI repair mode. and see if it helps. I'm hearing kind of mixed results. Some people absolutely love this product and some people don't see um, amazing results with it. So I don't know. If you have tried it, please let me know in the comment section what you think. It's supposed to repair the broken keratin bonds. So I don't know if it actually is cross-linking the nail, making it harder, or if it just repairs the broken bonds. So the bonds that are broken. So it doesn't make extra bonds. So maybe it's not a hardener. I just wish that these companies offered like scientific training rather than like just vague marketing. Okay, so this one is broken. So what I'm going to do, this one too, yeah, okay, so you know what, I have a feeling we're going to have to shorten them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's short enough. And this one, I don't know if it's a little too big. Yeah, but this one is cracked. This one is a crack, and this one, yes, is broken through. Okay, in this side it's not broken? No. No? Huh? It's just cracked, uh -huh. I think. Actually, okay. you know what, no, no, you're right, you're right. Okay, so let's just make them very short, because, you know, I have a feeling that the adhesive is not just it's not going to hold unfortunately and 
adhesive, unfortunately, it's like very temporary. So it will hold for a couple days, or a few days. And in that time, if the nail has a chance to grow out, or if you're able to file it off, then it helps. But if the break is really bad, So I'm going to drop some adhesive um, just to keep the nail stable. Let's go ahead and open this so it flows in. And then we're gonna shorten it. So then when there's a flake, you can kind of open up the flake and let the adhesive to flow into that area and sometimes it holds. Okay. So I'm going to let the other nails dry. I'm going to shorten this. Well, the good thing is, this client's nails grow fast. Last time, I think I mentioned this in the video, but so what happened was this client was doing a lot of cleaning, and this is why I recommend. And very often, I mean, pretty much everyone does it, where they know that they have like this huge project in front of them, they don't get their nails done because they don't want to damage the freshly done nails. But I would actually do the opposite, and I this is what I recommend. I recommend getting your nails done before doing something because. Very often when the nails are grown out and they're too long for someone's like, you know, life and they're unstable because the product is not bonded properly anymore because it's like, you know, a month old or something, it's aged and whatever, it just causes a lot of damage. So I would definitely at least, yeah, shorten the nails and I would personally take the product off. Sometimes the product can pull on the nails and it can damage them. But I explained that in the previous video, so if you're interested, check the previous video. I'm gonna let the other ones dry. Let's, let's start with the better hand. So uh, what I also recommend, when the nails are damaged, I actually got an email from, um, from someone, well, the Anna's Nail Advice, um, assessment request and her nails are very very damaged from acrylic removal and first thing that I always say is just shorten them as much as you can so that's that's one of the things that I recommend and you know what there is not that much that you can do you can support the new growth the, the old growth you can condition the nails but really shortening the nails doing the warm oil soaks that conditions the nails is the best thing you can do and just wait unfortunately it takes and don't give up too quickly because very often people do the right thing for two three four weeks and then they give up because they don't see the results meanwhile um, the results will take much longer so it takes five six months for the damaged nail when it's damaged all the way because here we have this is not bad this is just some very superficial damage this will take a month to grow out but when people have like this whole nail really damaged and they're very thin, when you actually press, you can see that it's very, very flexible. That will take a very long time to grow out. So shortening the nails every week or even twice a week, just so they don't have no growth. So like no free edge because the shorter they are, the, the less pressure you're putting on the nails. Because when you're hitting the nail here, it's going to bend in that weak area. So you wanna definitely prevent the nail from bending too much in the weak area. And I don't really worry too much about the shape. So basically I follow the shape of the nail bed. So I follow the shape of the pink part of the nail.
all of these uh, damaged areas, it's gonna take a month. So it's, it's they're just on the ends now. It's not too, too bad. these marks here are also from bending of the corners you see where the nail is bending same thing with this it's bending here so this is why it cracked here By the way, so this is the living skin that I'm nudging back. So I'm actually pushing it back gently. That's why I call it nudging. And that exposes the cuticle. So believe it or not, this skin is not growing there. It's just being stretched because if it's stuck to the natural nail, as the nail is growing, it's just pulling that skin with it. So this is not overgrowth of cuticle because that's not the cuticle, this is living skin. So if you don't want that to happen, just nudge the skin back, even every couple of days, but for sure once a week. Some people don't have that skin very, very sticky. It doesn't stick to the nail, so then it doesn't stretch, but this is not overgrowth. And the reason why I'm so mm, particular about my the terms that I'm using is because if you're using the proper terms, you will understand how all of this works a little bit better, it just makes much more sense. And then you'll know how to treat the skin. So all this skin is a living skin. It's called also a skin fold or neo fold. You see this, now this is cuticle. So the cuticle can be removed dry or you can use Blue Cross. I'm just going to use electric file, but if you are you doing your nails yourself, you can definitely use the Blue Cross. I don't recommend using electric file if you're not very comfortable with it. Well, highly trained with it, honestly. You can make a lot of damage. The key is to just grab the cuticle without filing the nail. these little taps and of course the skin around the nails looks dry because we just removed the polish with acetone but the reason why I like using acetone is because the acetone really shows me everything and by the way acetone does not cause the damage acetone just makes the damage very visible because it doesn't hide the removers and I explained that in a previous video that removers or gel removers or nail polish removers that have water and alco alcohol, um, water and for example oil, they will basically leave the water and the glycerin or the, the oil behind after the acetone evaporates 
and the nail just looks better. But it doesn't really mean that it's less damaged. It's just that damage is not visible because right now if I just apply water and oil on the nail, the nail is going to look less damaged too. But I want to see the damage. So what also would help these nails would be possibly IV treatment. The sad thing is that I don't recommend any more IV treatment for my viewers because I've heard so many stories where people get it done and they get it done completely incorrectly. So this is really, really sad. So what often people do is they just apply the product, they don't even heat it up and then they cure it, which is completely the opposite of what you should be doing. So with IBX treatment, you're supposed to be applying this, it's a coating, like an oil-based coating and um, on the nail, heating it up so it's the product has a chance to flow and absorb into the nail plate. Wiping the excess, so whatever didn't soak in, is supposed to be wiped off. And then whatever soaked into the nail is supposed to be um, cured. So putting product on top and curing it creates a coating, that's it. Which that's not what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to achieve reinforcements in the nail. So you know what? What the heck? Maybe we should do it. The IBX very quickly. Buff. This is soft buffer. I just want to get rid of that staining, which is on the very, very surface. Alcohol. Okay, so this one is called Repair. So this is the thinner product. IBX is a combination of two products. So if there is any visible um, signs of damage, then you can use this product. And it's it's thinner, so it seeps into, as you can see, into the little crevices. It's actually has like gel components. So don't use it if you have any allergic reactions in the past to any type of gel. But so what it does, it seeps into the nail plate and then it's cured into the nail plate and it just supports. It actually does not bond to the nail, which is a good thing because again, anything that can bond to the nail can um, damage the surface, right? So this kind of just goes into the nail and just sits there. It just fills it in and as you can see I don't know if you can see it or not but I can see that the product is like soaking in which is a sign that it it works it's needed because if you use it for someone whose nails are not damaged this stays like on the surface it doesn't even soak into the nail so now we're gonna warm it up under the infrared uh, for one minute So now I tell the client to move her thumbs a little bit, just to make sure that the thumbs get um, the heat as well. So now what I'm going to do is, I don't want anything on the nail plate. I want all the product in the nail plate. So I'm going to um, squeeze this, just so I'm not rubbing this product into the skin. Remove the excess, so whatever soaked in, we don't want it. And now we're curing it in the CMD lamp for one minute. And now I'm going to wipe whatever didn't cure. I'm going to wipe it from the surface. Nice and clean.
and I'm going to put the second part of this. It's called strengthen. So IBX is nice. It's not a miracle. It's not going to like, you know, really regrow your nails or anything like that, but it helps. It kind of seals in, as you can see, these little layers, but uh, it's kind of temporary, I find, because sometimes initially the nails look amazing, but then after a week or two, they kind of go back to like those lifted areas kind of lift again. But it is a support for a while, for sure. Now what I would recommend probably is to use a lot of jojoba and do warm oil soaks. See how nicely this looks? Don't forget that this is also oil-based, so it can kind of sometimes hide some of the damage. Okay, so we're gonna warm it up. But this one is supposed to be warmed up. First coat for four minutes, second coat, because we can do this twice for two minutes, but I'm going to do in the middle three minutes. Three minutes later. As you can see, this is a thicker product. It not, did not soak in as much as the other one. I'm gonna wipe off whatever it didn't soak in. Dab off, not wipe off. And cure it. So now I grabbed this other side of the piece because I don't want to rub this into the skin. Okay. I'm going to wipe it with alcohol. If you guys want to see how the nails look in a week, please let me know in the comment section so maybe I can redo this client's nails if you guys want to. Because if there's interest, I'm going to do a complimentary manicure. Because then I can guarantee that the client comes in. <laughs> Here, but you see it looks nice it looks better okay so definitely much better so i'm going to do what okay this is not going to be perfect but i'm going to do what i would recommend for you guys to do and it's the dazzle dry base coat and top coat as like a Mm, like a clear coat I call it it just supports the the nail as the nail is growing out I'm going to shorten this nail Okay, so I'm gonna use the Dazzle Dry Prep, and people are asking me if the prep is better than just an alcohol. I don't know, I, I like using it because I think it's a little bit less drying, it has some water, maybe it helps. You don't use so much of it, so it's not that expensive. Okay, so one last look, how the nails look, so we can compare it next time. When the client comes back. So 
So this coat, uh, so by the way, base coat is not going to by itself work because I had clients or uh, people in the, com in the comment section, you guys ask me if you can just buy the base coat, but the base coat is really, it's not going to stay by itself. It does need a top coat for it to stay. And the coating is going to be very thin. It's not going to be extremely shiny, but it does make the nails feel better, not as flimsy. And mm, it's gentle on the nails compared to other polishes. So it dries very, very quickly. Okay, so this is dry and I'm not sure if you can see, but it's not perfect, okay? So it does dry, the thing with does dry is that it shows imperfections. So the ends are still a little bit uneven, but you know what? It's going to be the most gentle coating. And by next week, some of it will be, you know, grown out so we can repeat the same thing and see how the nails are.
Okay, so the nails are not perfect, but I'm sure they feel better. And I know it sucks, <laughs> but they just have to grow out. And I think sometimes when you bond a stronger product, that creates even more damage, and then it's like a never-ending you know, cycle. So this way, it's going to grow out three weeks and it's back to healthy nails. Okay, I wanted to give you a quick update on this client. So she sent me these pictures 10 days after the manicure that you just watched. And this is how her nails are looking. So not bad, right? So they're still damaged. It's just that the, the nails are a little bit more conditioned. And I'm actually surprised how nice they look. So they still have the Dazzle Dry Nail Polish. Mm, and let's just do a quick, a little close up. So I'll show you what's, what's going on. As you can see here, the nail is cracked. And this is why, uh, actually her nails grow pretty fast, but this is why I recommend just keeping the nails very short and keeping no free edge, just so there is no bend to the nails because that causes more surface damage here. So the IBX worked, I have to say, it really worked, probably maybe in combination with the OPI, I don't know. So someone in the comment section was asking me What's the difference between the new OPI repair mode and IBX treatment? So the, the way they work is they work very differently. So the way the OPI apparently works, so the OPI repair mode, it makes bonds between the nail keratin. And the IBX, what it does, it doesn't make extra bonds, it just stuffs the product in between the little cells. So it's almost like a, a gel, really, that absorbs into the top layer of the nail plate and then you cure it in the nail plate. So they probably actually work pretty good in combination with each other. So this one broke, of course, this one had the, a lot of damage here on the side, so it cracked. So the, I would have to say, uh, as you can see, the adhesive usually lasts a few days and then it just lets go because adhesive over time it breaks down in water as well so it's not a very long lasting stable solution so it's good to hold the nail for a few days but that's about it so this was the the bad hand look how beautiful her nails are and this was the the better hand so they actually look good so i was hoping that i would see her again at 10 days or a week later but unfortunately um she's away well I guess fortunately for her, unfortunately for us, she's away and she can't, uh, she can't come in for a manicure and I'm not sure when she's going to be back. And this brings me to another a little topic. So would getting or would putting gel on her nails help? Like would it make the nails, would it help the nails to grow out the damage? Well, additional gel can cause, so let's say if you have damage only here and then you put gel on the whole surface, this can cause additional damage. And the problem is that with gel appointments, with the gel enhancements, you need regular appointments. And it is very important to figure out if these regular appointments, as a nail technician, it's, it's important to figure out if these appointments are possible for the clients to maintain. Is it possible for her to pre-book her appointments? Because when you are like a one person business like I have. In order to guarantee an appointment, you have to book in advance and then you have to keep that appointment because I'm only one person. I don't have a backup, right? So, and that doesn't necessarily work for every client. Like not everybody's work schedule is so consistent that they can keep these appointments because then when you call last minute, usually I don't have anything available, right? Like I have, I plan my life and everything else and the YouTube around my appointments as well. So I'm aware of this situation and this is why I never would recommend even shellac appointments, uh, but especially hard gel, which is very difficult to, to remove by yourself, especially, um, to a client who cannot book, um, pre-book their appointments or a client who's just not interested in such regular appointments. A lot of people are just not into such commitment. So this is why it's very important to have that conversation um, before providing this type of service. So oftentimes what people do is they, as, a, as, a, as nail technicians, the client books for gel and they just automatically do gel. But I, I really don't. I really try to talk to people and make sure that their lifestyle allows them to, 
to book regular appointments and to keep them, right? Because then it becomes a hassle. If people um, cancel last minute, it's a, it's, a, it's a huge problem for me. And then they can't rebook and then it's a lot of stress for you know both sides. So what's the point? So for those type of clients, sometimes just having a regular nail polish is a better idea, just like this client, because she can just take this off and she doesn't have to worry about anything. Okay, so I hope this video was helpful and this follow-up was helpful. Uh, when I see her again, I'll make another video of her manicure if you guys are interested. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.